only the ending. It was on a clear morning almost 11 days earlier at the Kennedy Space Center's launch pad 34 in Florida that we witnessed the beginning of the first manned mission in the United States Apollo program to land astronauts on the moon. The purpose of the flight of Apollo 7 could be stated very simply. Prove that the spacecraft command and service modules would function properly in space long enough to carry men to the moon and back. Accomplishing this was considerably less simple. It meant showing that a brand new spacecraft, far more complicated than its predecessors, would operate so well it could be trusted to take men well beyond near-Earth orbit. The astronauts were spacecraft commander Walter Schirra and pilots Don Isley and Walter Cunningham. The Kennedy Space Center had spent long days in preparation and checkout, working toward a launch time which had been set for months. It was not by chance that Apollo 7 lifted off only two and three quarter minutes after the appointed moment. Marshall Space Flight Center had spent years directing development and testing of the Saturn 1B launch vehicle. And it was not by chance that Apollo 7 was placed almost exactly on its planned trajectory into orbit about the Earth. You've got speed, right, Apollo 7. Thrust is okay. Roll, Roger, roll. thrust. Roll, Roger, roll. Very Plus early in the flight, the general pattern of go for Apollo 7 was established in a conversation between the spacecraft and mission control at the manned spacecraft center in Houston, Texas. Right on the old button. Very good. Flight booster. Yeah. We appear we may be slightly marginal on the locks. Oh. Okay, right. stand by. Cut off. J2, cut off. Beautiful. Fido. Flight photo work go, go across, across the, the board. board. CMC looks good, flight. 25553. Five, H dot is minus four balls one. Across the board, Captain. We have you go for orbit here. Go for orbit. Apollo 7 was also go for an exhaustive series of tests of its worthiness in space. One of the first things which had to be learned was whether the astronauts could control the spacecraft combined with the S-4B Saturn stage. A very similar thing would have to be done during the early phases of a lunar mission. The answer was not long in coming. Three, two, one, mark. S-4B test complete. Beautiful. That was outstanding. Ah, real fine. Though. Outstanding. Next, the spacecraft and S-4B stage were separated. The question now was whether the astronauts could turn their spacecraft around and control it to the degree required for future physical link-ups with equipment in space. For this, too, would have to be done in the lunar flight. And again, the answer was yes. Something that will not be seen in the lunar flight or in any other forthcoming Apollo mission were the panels at the top of the S-4B stage. They will simply be jettisoned in the future, but they drew comment in Apollo 7. And the small panel at the top, left and bottom are opened uh, at I would test to be about a 45 degree angle and the small panel on the right is just opened to maybe uh, 30 degrees at the very best. Uh, Roger. Looks like you're looking at a four-jawed angry alligator. Apollo 7 escorted its spent S-4B stage through space for perhaps 30 minutes, then departed.